love him so When he flips that dough He's Pizza Boy USA What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2020 Ford Mustang EcoBoost courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I'm in this one today, not just because I own a 2019 Ford Mustang, but I'm in this one today because there are actually several changes for the 2020 Mustang EcoBoost. And of course, I will be going over all of them along with everything else about this beast. So what do you say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different configurations for the 2020 for Mustang EcoBoost. First one being the Fastback starting at $26,670. Then there is the Premium Fastback for $31,685. Convertible goes for $32,170. And then there is the Premium Convertible starting at $37,185. And so regardless of which configuration you go with though, the power plan on this beast will be the same. Powering the Mustang EcoBoost will be a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 310 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 350 pound-feet of torque available at 3,000 RPM. Power, of course, sent to the rear wheels through your choice of either a six-speed manual, which does come standard, or the 10-speed automatic, which adds $1,595. And that one does come with paddle shifters, by the way, which of course we will be testing out in a little bit. We do have the 10-speed here today, but nonetheless, zero to 60 comes in at approximately 5.3 seconds. Quarter mile time, 13.9 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 21 City 30 Highway for the manual coupe, 21 City 32 Highway for the 10-speed coupe, and 20 City 28 Highway for the convertible. And so having said all that, that is the standard setup but I do want to mention there is actually a high performance package which is really the big change for the 2020 Mustang EcoBoost that goes for $4,995 that is going to include a 2.3 liter twin scroll turbocharged inline four-cylinder 330 horsepower which is a 20 horsepower bump from the standard engine 350 pound-feet of torque still and so but in addition to that 20 horsepower bump there are several different items included in that high performance package including an active exhaust with quad tips just like the GT, larger radiator, 19 by 9 inch unique aluminum alloy wheels, black painted strut tower brace, aluminum instrument panel, oil pressure and boost gauge pack added front splitter, black hood accent striping, heavy duty front springs, larger brake rotors with four piston front calipers, unique chassis tuning, upsize rear sway bar, and a gloss black rear spoiler. So as you can tell, quite a bit for that hefty price tag. And really, it's not so much a hefty price tag when you consider all of what you actually get with it. It's quite reasonable in reality. But nonetheless, before we do that paddle shifter test, I want to mention the drive modes. Those drive mode toggle switches are located just in front of the shifter there. And by the way, they do come with the 101A package and up essentially. So they will not come with the actual base Mustang EcoBoost. Didn't want to mention that, but they're going to include normal sport track and snow adjusting things like the shift points, throttle response, and there's actually a separate toggle switch for the steering sensitivity as well. And I did put that steering sensitivity in sport at the start of my drive because I do own a 2019 Mustang GT and that is by far the best steering mode. It is substantially different than the other steering feels. I will say that, but I'll get more into that in a little bit here. So having mentioned all that, let me go ahead and find a straightaway here. Let's test out the paddle shifters and let's see how quickly they react for us in the Mustang EcoBoost. I know they react insanely quick in the Mustang GT, but let's check out the EcoBoost here. And so real quick, what I'm gonna do is push the shifter all the way to the back. That is gonna give me full manual shift mode. And let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters here. Here we go. lots of pull. Dang, they are not that bad. They don't feel quite as quick actually as the Mustang GT. Having said that, they still react insanely quickly. So very nice paddle shifters, even on the Mustang EcoBoost. So, and you can use them of course for engine braking in the snow as well if you wanted to. But to take it out of that manual shift mode, I'm just gonna slide the shifter back up into drive and give full control back to the EcoBoost here. And what do you guys say? Let's do a quick little acceleration here. I'm gonna put it in sport driving mode, I guess. And let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Mustang EcoBoost here up to speed. All right, so here we go, guys, in three, two, one, go. Huck, spinning. <laughs> Definitely quite 
a fan of get up and go, my goodness, but certainly not as quick as the GT. The GT is a beast, but dang, I was pleasantly surprised. There's a good bit of acceleration there in the Mustang EcoBoost. And I did want to mention something to you guys in addition to that. Having done the acceleration there in Sport Plus driving mode, if I were to have put it in track mode, there actually is a track apps feature which you can access through the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there through the digital display up front there. So with that track apps feature, that comes standard for every single Mustang, whether it be the GT or the base Mustang EcoBoost, that is going to allow you to record statistics like your zero to 60 time. It's gonna save your fastest zero to 60 time, fastest quarter mile time, their 60 to zero braking performance, a track timer, bunch of different things you can test out and it will save on your Mustang EcoBoost. I absolutely love that feature in the Mustang. Really, the only thing I would add to it is a top speed thing. So you can actually save the top speed you've ever gone in the Mustang. But other than that, it's absolutely awesome that that feature is there. So I did want to mention that as well because that zero to 60 timer is only available in track mode in case you wanted to test that out. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs with dual piston front calipers. In the back, 12.6 inch solid rear disc with single piston rear calipers. As far as the braking feel goes, it's plenty fine for the Mustang EcoBoost. It's not quite as firm as the GT, but it certainly does the trick in this beast. And again, if you were to go with the performance pack for the Mustang EcoBoost, that will add larger rotors with four piston front calipers, so even better stopping power if you were to go that route. But touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stable bars and you can add to that all those performance package goodies that you get with that package so that's going to be there for you as well but the optional suspension component i wanted to mention on the mustang ecoboost is the magna ride damping suspension and so that is optional and it's always a feature i like to recommend because i did not get it on my mustang gt and that is the one thing i regret not getting because that gives you the best of both worlds so it's going to monitor each shock absorber individually not only soaking up the road imperfections giving you a smoother ride but when you're going around the turns a little faster it's going to tighten up that suspension giving you better handling as well so again best of both worlds and certainly an option i would recommend if you want to not only better ride comfort but also better handling as well overall though as far as ride quality goes it pretty much rides as you would expect the mustang to ride it's perfectly fine for me i actually lowered my mustang and upgraded to wheels as well and i'm still fine with that ride quality but again that magna ride damping suspension is going to give you the very best ride quality if that was the utmost importance for you as far as the steering feel goes that is absolutely wonderful and again that's partly due in fact because i put it in that sports steering mode that is going to give you a much weightier steering feel as opposed to the other driving modes but really the steering feel gives you a little something for everybody because of those steering modes that are available so that of course is wonderful as well as far as the cabin noise goes all i'm really getting is the engine noise and the climate control right now but other than that engine noise is actually a good thing in a car like the Mustang in my opinion so cabin noise is fine on that part visibility is 100% on point I always say this in every Mustang review definitely got the Camaro beat when it comes to visibility although I'm sure you will get used to it but either way visibility is 100% on point in any Mustang so I love that as well but to go along with that there is a safe and smart package that adds an additional thousand dollars if you wanted that it's gonna add a bunch of things but one of those things included in that package is rain sensing windshield wipers so I wanted to mention that with visibility because that is going to automatically turn on the windshield wipers when the Mustang detects any kind of rainfall or even mist so it's one less thing you got to worry Worry about so you can better focus more of your attention on enjoying the drive in the Mustang EcoBoost. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new Oxford White 2020 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. All right, and so here she is, you guys, the 2020 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. Let's go ahead and start up front on this one. When it comes to that front grille, there will be a chrome pony logo front and center. However, there is a unique front grille, actually, if you were to go with the performance package. So that is gonna differ a little bit there. Pony logo is going to be on the driver's side of that front grille if you go with the performance package. And you're also gonna get a unique front splitter down below as well. 
The Maker Awaited Sides LED headlights with LED signature lighting comes standard. That does come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, the headlights do turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights, also standard. LED turret signal lighting, also standard. And looking up a little bit, I did want to mention those hood vents. They are functional hood vents, and that comes standard across the board as well, so it does assist with some engine cooling on super hot days in Pennsylvania, kind of like today. So, nonetheless, very aggressive, very nice look up front there. Then make your way to the side. Black window surrounds come standard. Taking a look at the side mirrors. They are power adjustable body colored side mirrors with an integrated blind spot mirror. However, if you were to go with the EcoBoost Premium, you will get heated side mirrors with LED integrated turd signals actually as well. So I did want to mention that. And you will get that 2.3 liter fender badging if you were to go with the performance package, again, for the Mustang EcoBoost. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. 17 inch silver painted aluminum alloy wheels come standard. With the premium trim, you get 18 inch machine faced aluminum alloy wheels. With the performance pack that bumps it up once again to 19 by nine inch machine faced aluminum wheels. And there's actually plenty of optional wheel designs still available on top of that. But so anyways, then making our way to the back, perhaps the easiest way to tell the difference between a 2020 and a 2019 Mustang on the lot is the shark fin antenna now coming standard on the 2020 and 2019 there was a more discreet circular dome style for that antenna but now there is a shark fin antenna for 2020 that's probably the easiest way to spot the difference between the two years there so we did want to mention that but actually getting to the back though of the mustang rear deck lid spoiler does come standard there is a spoiler delete option that is a free option by the way so you can actually order one without that rear spoiler if you wanted to LED sequential taillights also come standard. Love that. Not only are the LEDs, but sequential meaning when you turn the turn signal on, it looks like the LEDs are sliding from one side to the other. Definitely nice there. Clear reverse light down below and dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips is the standard setup. However, again, if you were to go with the performance pack, that not only gives you a Mustang GT rear diffuser, but dual exhaust outlets with quad tips. But having said that, let's just go ahead and start it up. I think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are round back, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there actually is a button on the key fob. That is one way. Also a button by the driver's left knee. That is yet another way. And probably the way I use the most on my personal Mustang, there is a button just above the rear license plate. It is a rubberized button. That's probably the simplest way to go ahead and open that up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.5 cubic feet for the fastback, 11.4 cubic feet for the convertible. So it's gonna be a little bit different there. Either way, there is a 50-50 split though, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it. And you have some cargo lighting, of course, back there as well. Then make our way to the rear legroom, 29 inches even for the fastback, 29.2 inches for the convertible. Either way, best left for children or car seats, definitely not gonna be able to fit any adults back there, but still plenty usable for small kids or car seats, like I said. But now make your way up to the front seats. There are manually adjustable cloth seating. That is the standard setup. Premium trim is gonna give you six-way power adjustable driver's seat and passenger seat actually with leather seating and those front seats are heated and ventilated with the premium so a lot of differences there. Recaro bucket seats are available for $1,595. The trade-off with that is that it eliminates the heated and ventilated seats but on the plus side it gives you enhanced bolstering so if you are one to take the corners a little bit faster Recaro bucket seats are definitely where it's at for that but I will say overall with these cloth seats that we have today and that I have in my own Mustang GT they are plenty comfortable so absolutely no issues with the seat for me. Take a look then at the steering wheel. This one surprised me actually. Tilt and telescoping obviously. Leather wrapped for all trim levels. Now the thing about this is it is a smooth leather in the GT, what I'm used to, but it is a texturized leather in the Mustang EcoBoost. Little difference there, I just wanted to mention it, but you can actually get a heated steering wheel as well. That does come with the 201A package for the premium trim level only. And so with them making our way to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Mustang logo on the one side and 
When you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch, and then the times two button is going to be a remote start. However, it is all keyless entry, so all you really need to do is simply leave the key in your pocket, walk up to the Mustang. If you put your hand behind the door handle, it automatically unlocks. And if you put your thumb on the horizontal lines on the door handle, that is how you're actually going to lock it as long as the key is on you. So it's kind of cool that way, very convenient. But there is a push button start located just in front of the shifter, so all I am going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. Right, so but then once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. However, there is an optional 12 inch digital gauge cluster that's available with the 201A package for the premium trim. Once again, that is of course gonna be the cooler digital gauge setup, a little more customizable as well. But having said that, I have this particular gauge setup that you are looking at right now on my own Mustang GT and I've been perfectly happy with it. So no issues there for me, but make your own way to overall interior quality. There is no power moonroof available. I wanted to start by mentioning that since somebody always asked in the comments. Ambient lighting comes with the premium trim, dual zoom climate control with the premium trim and the 101A package that we have today. Universal garage door opener comes with the premium trim as well as aluminum foot pedals down there too. And perhaps the one change that happened for the 2020 Mustang for both the GT and the EcoBoost is found just above the passenger side glove box where you see that Mustang insignia for 2019, it does just say Mustang. For 2020, it says Mustang 55 years. So that is gonna be perhaps the major change on the interior for the 2024 Mustang. But it looks good there as always and just below that you have the aluminum trim which is a little bit different than the GT I like it in both though it looks plenty good in both of them just in front of the shifter you have a 12 volt power outlet as well as a USB charging port just behind the shifter dual cup holders and just behind that within the center armrest you do have a 12 volt power outlet once again and another USB charging port and of course a little bit of storage down there too so one other thing I wanted to mention actually when it comes to the interior when you open the passenger side glove box of course you have a decent amount of storage there but there's a little yellow button if you press that you can use that as kind of a hidden secret compartment used to store your owner's manual or really anything that you wanted to store up there so you can actually see that compartment without actually pulling that little yellow lever so indeed it is a secret compartment kind of so thought that was pretty cool too but anyways now making our way to the tech display you will get a 4.2 inch display screen known as the sync system that is the standard setup however premium trim and the 101a package that we have today is going to give you the sync 3 system or the 8 inch color touchscreen display that you are currently looking at. Either way you get Bluetooth and audio streaming. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay though only comes with the Sync 3. What that is is if you have a smartphone simply hook it up to the Mustang therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that screen as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. Factory navigation system is available for $995 although if you have a smartphone you of course don't need it because you would still have navigation up on that screen can of course check out your climate control settings up there as well as your radio information and by the way when it comes to the sound system six speakers is the standard setup if you were to get that sync 3 system that bumps you up to nine speakers and then there is an optional 12 speaker bang and olsen sound system for 995 dollars so Having said that, what do you guys say? We do have the nine speaker sound system here. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> that was crazy. Definitely more than enough of a sound system for the Mustang. I actually have that sound system in my GT and I absolutely love it. I'm sure the Bang & Olufsen is a good bit better, but still the nine speaker sound system is great. I have had no issues whatsoever in my Mustang GT personally. But so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display though, is when you do put the EcoBoost in reverse, you will find a rear view camera across the board coming standard. In addition to that, there is also a reverse sensing system with the premium trim and 101A package that we have today. What that is, is your parking sensors found in the rear bumper. It's gonna essentially beep at you when you get too close to an object, preventing you from actually running into anything. So that's always a plus as well. And as always, that is going to lead us into safety. 
And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags, but also driver and passenger knee airbags as well. That doesn't always come standard in every car out there. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also tire pressure monitoring system. And in addition to that, there is that safe and smart package that goes for $1,000. Like I was mentioning earlier to you guys, it does give you rain sensing windshield wipers, but also pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking, automatic high beams, lane keep alert and adaptive cruise control as well. And so, but all in all, when it comes to my final thoughts of the Mustang EcoBoost, certainly an excellent pick. There is a reason why the Mustang is the number one selling sports car in the world. The bulk of that reason is the insane bang for your buck, essentially. You get a ton of performance for a relatively low price in any Mustang, whether it be the EcoBoost or the GT. Having said that, there is quite a substantial difference in acceleration and even braking when you compare those two, the EcoBoost and the GT. Like I said earlier in the video, my Mustang GT has a much firmer braking feel. It comes to a much quicker stop, I feel like, along with the acceleration being a much more noticeable acceleration compared to the EcoBoost. But having said that, you do have to spend quite a bit more with the GT as opposed to the EcoBoost. So the EcoBoost is plenty of a performance bang for your buck. And in the end, certainly one I would recommend. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media where I post a lot of my own Mustang GT there, for instance, on Instagram. Be sure you hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. So